Hey everybody, Tim Krause coming again to you from uh, the wonderful deserts of Arizona. Listen, I I just want to, we're going to do a video today. It, the video is going to be entitled Double Down on Bad Research. Now, uh, there have been people who have sent videos to us, and boy, we sure appreciate all the videos we've gotten. Man, it's, it looks like videos one right after another, and and we're really appreciative. It gives us an opportunity to do the research and to talk about these things. On January the 28th, 2022, I published a video entitled Desperation or Bad Research on YouTube. Now, I, I left you a link in the description, and I'll leave the link again in the description uh, block down below. The study notes have it, uh, but we'll make sure you get the link as well. This, ob this video obviously struck a chord with some message ministers. Jason Watkins, for instance, preached a sermon on February the 6th, 2022, repeating that there are, in fact, three Bibles. Even though we talked about that in the, in the uh, video, Desperation or Bad Research. Then we've got Ron Spencer, who takes it a step further. He doubles down on it and tells us that the pyramids of Giza, which according to William Branham were built by Enoch, contains all the Bible prophecies and points perfectly to the Zodiac. We're going to watch that video as well. Now, remember, message ministers instruct their assemblies to say what the prophets say, said, just as Tom Ray did on December the 2nd, 2021. We're going to see that video first. Uh, and you'll notice that, and it's interesting when we watch these videos, the assemblies, without having any understanding or knowledge about what it is their pastors are saying, they spend a lot of time really agreeing and amening the pastors, which is interesting because I'm pretty sure the message assembly members really don't have an understanding of what it is they're agreeing with, but uh, they certainly don't do the research and they certainly don't read their Bibles very well. So we're going to take a look at three videos back to back here. We're going to look at Tom Ray. This is December the 2nd, 2021. The segment I call Just Say What He Said. We're going to look at Jason Watkins on the 6th of February, 2022, three Bibles again. And we're going to look at Ron Spencer on the 13th, gosh, less than a week ago. He's going to say, tell us that the pyramids of Giza have all the Bible prophecies and points perfectly at the Zodiac. So we're going to take a look at those three videos. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Look what devil did to you, wrecked you, caused chaos in your life. You weren't even in your right mind, but you were the foreknown of God. You were messed up. You didn't even know what to think, but God was going to come in your generation and give you his mind so you could think his thoughts. And so many people want to tell God how to think his thoughts. That's why he said, stay with the message. Say what he said. Don't add to it or take away. Say what he said. Say, friends, you don't, you don't remember that you started in God. But you ha that's, that's why you agree with the word today. Because this is just God in another form. And the whole purpose of the gospel is to, is to, is to make you into this image. As, I, as I've said to you before, this is the third iteration of a Bible. The Noah stood there and preached for 120 years. But do you know before Noah went, there was one man that built a perfect Bible. And it's absolutely, they still don't understand it. But he built the Bible on earth in every symmetrical portion. Every prophecy of the scriptures written in the, in the Bible, in that Bible, in that pyramid, it points in a certain direction at the zodiac because it's God's first Bible, then this is his second Bible, and this man lived so perfect until one day God took him. Okay, we're going to address Ron's video first. Ron Spencer's video first. First thing we're going to take a look at here is, and by the way, I put a link in the study notes, and I'll put it down there in the description as well. This is the article that uh, on the Believe the Sites 
or excuse me, Believe the Sign website. It's called William Branham and the Zodiac. We're going to talk about where Ron gets this notion. Where do these message ministers find this stuff? And how, why is it that they're so unwilling to investigate it for themselves or actually take a look at it? Well, they come by it honestly. Uh, we're going to remind you of what William Branham said. Just a couple of quotes here. I have four of them. This is William Branham in 1953. This is April the 3rd. The The sermon was the cruelty of sin and the penalty that it cost to rid sin from our lives. Jeffersonville, Indiana. Here's what William Branham says. The second Bible was written, was written by Enoch and put in the pyramid. Okay. So he comes by it honestly. If you read the message and you only read the message, then you would think that, that what Ron said was exactly correct. You notice that his assembly amens, because they don't bother to do any research for themselves. So let's take a look at another example. Here's in 1953 now. this Again, this is November the 11th, preparation in Owensboro, Kentucky. William Branham speaking, and they were much better scientists than we have today. Go down in Egypt and looked at the pyramid setting in the middle of the earth, no matter where the sun is, that's never. Now, geographically, it's in the center of the earth. That's never a shadow. Or, there's never a shadow around it, no matter where the sun is. How'd they do that? Here's William Branham in 1962. This is... Uh, November the 4th, this is a morning service, Blasphemous Names, Jeffersonville, Indiana. Like Enoch, who built the pyramids that we believe, and the capstone never was put on top of them because the headstone was rejected and we taken now, not as doctrine, but as to understand just for the church here, 1962. Here's another one. We're going to go back again to 1951. This is July 27th, Morning Service, The Resurrection of Lazarus, Erie, Pennsylvania. Here, this is William Branham speaking. God is from above. He's riding the zodiac in the sky. Zodiac starts with the virgin. The first virgin, come, the first coming of Christ ends with Leo, the lion, the second coming, and he's writing his first Bible. There's three of them. One of them was written in the skies, one in the pyramids, one on this. Everything in God is in a trinity like a man's in a trinity. All right. Now we can go back and take a look at the the original video and talk about the uh, the zodiac. We cleared that up pretty pretty well. You can go back and take a look at the admonishments in the Bible. You will go back and take a look at the what the pyramid is, but or what the zodiac is. But the inaccuracies just in that quote. First of all, the the zodiac does not ends up with Leo the lion. It doesn't start with Vir Virgo the virgin. It actually starts in a different place and ends in a different place. Virgo and Leo are next to one another in the middle of the zodiac signs. We're also, But we're also going to talk about the, you know, we've talked in that first video about how the Bible specifically prohibits us from looking at the zodiac. Different than looking at the stars. Astrology, the zodiac, dramatically different than astronomy, the study of the stars. Because we're quite familiar with, and we showed it in the first video, God ordained the stars. He built the stars. He, he gives the movement to the stars. We're all on board with that. We totally understand that and agree with that. We're going to link in here now. We're going to talk, though, about the pyramids. This is the Believe the Sign website. There's an article, William Branham and the Zodiac. There's also, and I put in here uh, a link to an article from AnsweringGenesis.org about archaeology, ancient Egypt, the pyramids, ancient Egypt. I put that link there. It's really, really revealing. Take a look at that. But let's start with when Noah was alive. Or, excuse me, Enoch was alive. Now, Enoch was born before the birth of Christ, 3,384 years prior to the birth of Christ. Enoch was translated in 3,019 before Christ. Okay? Now, let's speak about when the pyramids of Giza were actually built. <clears throat> pyramids of e Egypt were actually built starting in 2,550 B.C., before Christ. They were completed in about 2490 B.C. Now, how do we know that to be true? Because there are lots and lots of Egyptologists who have taken a look at the writings inside, they refer to the hieroglyphs and the 
and the stories that those glyphs tell, story that the ancient language of Egypt tells us is about different dynasties in Egypt. It tells us about this king or this pharaoh and the other pharaoh and about the periods of time when the when they were actually built, when the pyramids were actually built. I'm going to quote here. This is called this is from history.com. This is ancient history of the ancient pyramids. Quoting now, no pyramids are more celebrated than the great pyramids of Giza, located on a plateau on the west bank of the Nile River on the outskirts of modern-day Cairo. The oldest and largest of the three pyramids at Giza, known as the Great Pyramid, is the only surviving structure out of the famed Seven Wonders of the Ancient World. It was built for Pharaoh Khufu, Cheops in Greek. Sneferu's successor and the second of the eight kings of the fourth dynasty. Though Khufu reigned for 23 years, from 2589 to 2566 BC, relatively little is known of his reign beyond the grandeur of his pyramid. The sides of the pyramid's base average 755, and it talks about it talks about how large they are. Three small pyramids built for Khufu's queens are lined up next to the Great Pyramid, and a tomb was found nearly containing the empty sarcophagus nearby, containing the empty sarcophagus of his mother, Queen Hetaphiris. Like other pyramids, Khufu's is surrounded by rows of mastabas, where relatives or officials of the king were buried to accompany and support him in the afterlife. I left a link of that in the description so you can get to that article. Okay? Now, from the time that Enoch was translated to the time to the starting of the construction of the pyramid began was 469 years. By this time, by the way, the flood had occurred. Noah had, you know, the antediluvian flood had already taken place. Uh, all of that had happened. Uh, and now we're, we built the pyramids, right, you know, and we know that they were built to honor Khufu. We know that Khufu was... In uh, he died in 2566. We know that the building started in about 2550 uh, BC. So we know all of this to be true. We know that Enoch was nowhere around when the pyramids were born or when the pyramids were built. Very very interesting. Now. From the time Enoch, now remember, from the time that Enoch was translated to the time the starting of the construction of the pyramids began was 469 years. So clearly, Enoch had nothing to do with the building of the pyramids. But how about that shadow business? Let's take a look. Remember when Branham said, no matter what you do, there's never a shadow around it, no matter where the sun is. Remember when he said that in 1953? Let's take a look at a picture. Oops. It looks like there's a shadow from the pyramids. Let's take a better look at a better picture of the very same image. This is a little bit expanded so you can see the, the smaller pyramids and the minor pyramids around it. The mastabas, you can see those over to the left or top left. Uh, and you can see, the, uh, look at those, aren't those shadows? I'm, I'm just spitballing here, but that to me looks like shadows. I'm just guessing. Okay. Here's another, a couple of images of it. Oops, looks like a shadow there. The Great Pyramid right there looks like a shadow. And here's a, a picture from space. This is a satellite picture. Good resolution picture from space. Oops, looks like even that time of day, given the angle and also taken straight down from satellite now. So much for the no shadow theory. So we know Branham got it wrong on several fronts. Enoch wasn't alive when the pyramids were built, and the pyramids seemed to cast a shadow according to the video or the photo evidence. Where did Branham get the information? Where did he come up with this? Well, we're going to talk about a thing called the Book of Enoch. Now, the Book of Enoch is an apocryphal book. Apocryphal book means secret or hidden. Apocrypha means secret or hidden. There are several texts that did not get into the official Bible, they were examined like the book of Enoch was. There's a reason that they are not in Scripture. We're going to talk about that. It turns out that they are pseudepigrapha. Now, what does pseudepigrapha mean? Pseudepigrapha means that somebody wrote them under a pseudonym 
and they they don't know who the suit the person was that actually wrote them, but they attributed them to Enoch. They were not Enoch's writings. How do we know that? Because they were written in 200 years before the birth of Christ. And Enoch was translated over 3,000 years before the birth of Christ. So we know that Enoch didn't write them. We, the, and, and the definition, by the way, of pseudepigrapha is a spurious or pseudonym, pseudonymous writing, especially Jewish writings, ascribed to various biblical patriarchs and prophets but were composed within approximately 200 years of the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, why is that? Well, you may remember Malachi was written 400 years, 450 years or so before the book of Matthew, before the arrival of Christ. Huge gap in time. A lot of, lot of dead air. There wasn't any writings. There weren't people writing books. There weren't scribes writing the books of the Bible. People filled in the gaps with apocryphal writings, with apocryphal books. Now, while the book of Enoch is a composite of several smaller units, all five major sections are normally dated to the first or second centuries before Christ, which means Enoch had nothing to do with the book of Enoch. Now, the Enoch collection is therefore the earliest witness to Jewish ap apocalyptic literature. The book of Enoch includes the first book of Enoch, which is the Ethiopic book of Enoch, the second book of Enoch, the Slavonic book of the Secrets of Enoch, and the third book of Enoch, the Hebrew book of Enoch, and versions of the book of Giants. First book of Enoch, the Ethiopic book of Enoch, or First Enoch, is more known simply as the book of Enoch. Although this book is considered apocryphal for the Western canon, it is contained in the Ethiopic book Bible. It is considered sacred by some important first followers of Christ, but's left outside of the Bible and disappeared for centuries until it was rediscovered in 1773 in Ethiopic. This manuscript was first translated into English in the 1820s and into German in the 1830s. According to most scholars, part of it was written in the 3rd century BC and part of it in the 1st century BC. How do we know that? Because the book of Enoch refers to historical events that occurred and can be traced back to 3rd BC and 1st BC in the present tense of the book of Enoch. <clears throat> so we know that it was written then while those things were being talked about as present tense things going on in the book of Enoch, which means it didn't happen 3,000 years earlier. Although the earth, although the first oldest complete copies of First Enoch are Canine or Kebron 9, dated late 14th, early 15th centuries. Now Canine is a is a test that they can do against the papyrus. It's you've heard of carbon 13 dating. Canine or Kebron 9 is a similar isotope that's bounced off of the material. It, it, it dates the material chemically and scientifically can tell us when these materials that wrote the book were actually produced or developed. The Enoch are canine dated late 14th or early 15th century and Ethiopian monastic microfilm library of the 15th or 14th century. Fragments found in Qumran in the 1950s are more than 2,000 years old. This is what, see, the fragments that were found in Qumran that are the original, what are, what are known as the original fragments of the book of Enoch were found in Qumran in the 1950s. They were canine dated. It turns out that they were 2,000 years old, but not as old as 3,000 years or, or 5,000 years old, which it would have put them in the time of Enoch. Okay. Other old import important manuscripts are the Abadianus 55, possibly 15th century, and the British Museum Orient 485, first half of the 16th century. The second book of Enoch, or the Slavonic Enoch, or Second Enoch, is another apocryphal book found complete only in old Slavonic manuscripts. 
It was once present in the old Slavonic Bible. It's usually dated to the first century CE, although first century CE or BC, although Matthew Black of the Oxford Guide to People and Places of the Bible states that there is no manuscript earlier than the 14th century BC. Okay? So there's no... They they certainly did not take place 3,000 years before Christ. Okay? The third book of Enoch, the Hebrew Enoch, or third Enoch, is a rabbinic text originally written in Hebrew, usually dated to the 5th century, okay, 5th century. Some experts believe it was written by Rabbi Ishmael after Christ. This is the 5th century A.D. A lot of people say that it was written by Rabbi Ishmael 2nd century AD, familiar with those those people uh, say that Rabbi Ishmael was familiar with both 1st and 2nd Enoch. He wrote the 3rd book of Enoch. Now the book of Giants, which is also included in the book of e- books of Enoch, plural, the book of Giants contains a narrative that involves the antediluvian giant offspring originally known from both Genesis and the book of Enoch. The book of Giants resembles particularly the 1st book of Enoch. Okay? So we know by chemical analysis, by looking at the at the books, by studying the history of the books, that the big book of Enoch's were apocryphal. They were written by somebody who claimed that they were written by Enoch. They were not written by Enoch. Okay? The reason that they were left out of the Bible is because they were attributed to a patriarch in the Bible, but were proved not to have been written by that patriarch. The way they knew that is looking at current events in, written about in Enoch, first book, second book, and third book of Enoch, and then by associating that with the historical records to determine exactly when those books had been written. Okay? So it's important for you to know that. Uh, and and we can that's the books were they they you you can actually call the book of Enoch's fiction they're they're fictional they're not even they're, there's no reality associated with the book of Enoch so here we have William Branham quoting the book of Enoch about how Enoch built the great temple or the great pyramids of e- Egypt and put all of the scriptures in the great pyramids in Egypt and how it points exactly to the zodiac Okay, not true. Just not true. You you can go take a look at the pyramids yourselves and determine that that's not true. We know when the pyramids were built. We know when Enoch was born. We know when the book of Enoch was written. It's an apocryphal book. It's not in the Bible because it's untrue. Because there's so much evidence stacked up against it being inspired by the word by God. That, that it could not be included in the Bible. Yet William Branham refers to it. This is a prophet of God now. This is a prophet of God who says, Thus saith the Lord 1,616 times in his 1,100 sermons during his ministry. This is a man who proclaimed himself a prophet of God over 400 times in over 1,100 sermons. And yet, this is a man who is using the book of Enoch, an apocryphal book, an untrue book, a work of fiction attributed to a, a patriarch of the Bible, although it was written a couple of centuries before Christ as opposed to 3,000 years before Christ. There's a reason that it's not Scripture. It is untrue. We're gonna, Now, how about other doctrine which we can point to where William Branham was confused? We're going to look at a couple of video clips here. The first one is Barry Coffey. This one is dated the 13th of February, 2022. Here, Barry Coffey would prefer that if you're being led by Satan, just find yourself another church. We're also going to take a look at Ron Peterson here. This is the 10th of uh, 10th of February, 2022. <laughs> this one is quite interesting. Rod Bergen, I use that name loosely. I'll let you take a look at the video, but it's really interesting. Very, very interesting video you should look at from Ron. So 
So let's take a look at those videos and then we'll come back and address those as well. Here we go. You know what God did for Saul? He gave him an evil spirit to lead him. When Saul rejected God's way, he got an evil spirit to lead him. And when a man rejects the leading of the Holy Spirit, or any person rejects the leading of the Holy Spirit, you've got a devil on you to lead you. Now, I would say this. <clears throat> if you're being led by Satan, I just assume you found another church. Because I'd rather, I'd rather minister to a handful of people who were led by the Holy Spirit. He said, that's exactly the Bible. And these different ones, I'm sorry, but these ones that have tried to find mistakes of this prophetic ministry, and they say, well, hit the date and this and, 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 and 16 people we can't find, you know, historical uh, nonsense. I want to ask you, find me where he was wrong on the Godhead. Find me where he was wrong on Daniel's 70 weeks. Find me where he was wrong on Mystery Babylon the Great. Find me where he was wrong on all of those great doctrinal things. And yet when they deny this message, guess what? They go right back to the mother whore. The prophet of God said the devil travels in the name Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Even those guys that believe the sign and all of that nonsense. In fact, I'll have you to know, and I thank God that I did this. There in Brother Ed Biskell's office, in his own church, he said, Brother Ron, I want to show you. I've got two men in my church that have been working on this program for over a year and a half or two years. And I said, and they're about ready to launch this website, and we want you to be one of the first to, to witness it. They sat me down, and Brother Rod Bergen went ahead, and, and uh, I use that word loosely, set up the program, couldn't get it to work, couldn't, finally had to redo something, start the computer over, whatever, and finally it worked. Boom. Believe the sign. And it went off on the pillar of fire picture and on and on and on. And after about a 20-minute preview of this, Brother Bisco, and such a gentleman that he is. I love Brother Bisco. He said, so, Brother Ron, what do you think? Do you like this? I turned to the two brethren that had been working on this for almost two years. I said, who are you trying to convert? Okay, so we've got Ron Peterson telling us, you know, dates, yeah, maybe William Branham got some dates wrong, and, you know, maybe it was incorrect about, but you can't point to one major doctrine that William Branham taught which was incorrect. Well, we started with that, with the pyramids, and, and we can follow that up with the Zodiac, uh, but, but let's, let's go on here. Here's one, and I'm just going to show you one here, the Trinity. Okay, because it's one that was mentioned in the videos that we just saw. It's interesting, the Trinity. We got William Branham all over the place on the Trinity. William Branham is unsure of what his position is, but what's more evident when I read these to you is you're going to become aware that William Branham really didn't understand the Trinity. He didn't get it. Let's take a look at that here. And remember now, message people tell us. The Trinity is not in the Bible. The Trinity is of the devil. It's a thing from hell. The Trinity is bad. Because we're going to see William Branham tell us that here in just a minute. But let's see William Branham's original teaching about the Trinity. Let's, let's look at that. Here's 1951. This is July the 29th morning service, the resurrection of Lazarus. Branham speaking. And now there are those sitting here who are feeble this afternoon, that's in need of physical healing, and we've chosen these few words to read from thine. And may the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, come in now, the promise, the comforter that you said you would send. Hmm, interesting. Here's William Branham, 1953, April the 3rd, The Cruelty of Sin. 
Branham speaking again. God is perfect in three. He's perfect. Branham clears his throat. Pardon me. He's perfect in Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's perfect in justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's perfected in his threes. Hmm. Interesting. Here's William Branham in 1953. This is going to be June the 9th. This is a morning service. Demonology, religious realm. God's in a trinity. God's power is in a trinity. And the devil's in a trinity. And his power is in trinity. I can prove it by the Bible. And that Urim Thummim was only the crystal ball that the devil uses today. And the false prophet back here today, the one that we have now, was the witch or the fortune teller out yonder took the place of the prophet on the devil's side. See what I mean? Hmm. But he must have gotten a correction from God. <clears throat> Let's take a look at what he teaches later. This is 1959. Palmer, wor Palmer worm, locust, canker worm, caterpillar. 1959. This is August the 23rd. Branham speaking. You say, bless the Holy Trinity. Find me the word Trinity anywhere in the pages of God's Bible. It's a man-made scheme, an old dirty church rag wrapped around to take place of sap line of God's Holy Spirit. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. You find it and come to me. You're duty-bound to do it as a Christian. If you find it, it's not in God's holy writings, and the Father and Son of Holy Ghost is hatched out of hell. Now, most message churches teach this. Most message churches teach that. All right? Here's another one. 1960. This is September the 25th, that day on Cal Calvary. Branham speaking again. Where do you get that triune pagan doctrine? Out of a catechism, not out of the Bible. The word Trinity is not even mentioned in the whole scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as a Trinitarian God. Now, here is interesting. William Branham demonstrates that he doesn't understand the difference between the Trinity and triune. Okay? They are two entirely different things. Unless he's speaking about both of them, and then I would take dramatic exception to it. Okay? Triune and Trinity are not the same. Let's take a look, though, at another teaching that William Branham teaches about the Trinity. This is 1961. This is January the 8th, Revelation chapter 4, number 3. Now, my brother, precious brother, this is, by the way, this is 8th of January. Now, my precious brother, I know this is a tape also. Now, don't get excited. Let me say this with godly love. The hour is approached where I can't hold still on these things no more. Too close to the coming, see? Trinitarian is of the devil. I say that, thus saith the Lord. Look where it come from. It come from the Nicene Council where the Catholic Church be become in rulership. The word Trinity is not even mentioned in the entire book of the Bible. In fact, the Trinity didn't come out of the Nicene Council, uh, but we'll leave it that diff that's for a different time. But here we see William Branham saying, Trinitarianism is of the devil. I say that, thus saith the Lord. And that seems to be consistent, although it's a little confused with triune in the second, uh, the, the triune Godhead that we see in the second quote, clear that William Branham doesn't understand the difference between the Trinitarian or the triune Godhead. But we'll leave it there. But here's what's interesting now. After 1961, remember that quote where he says, Trinitarian is of the devil. I say that, thus saith the Lord. I wonder if God changed William Branham's mind back again to his original teaching. Here William Branham is in 1965. This is April the 18th in the morning. It is the rising of the sun. But now the true trinity of God, being one manifested in Christ, who was life and had broke the seals and conquered the many and rose up, the one true and living God. I am he that was dead. And I'm alive forevermore and have the keys of death and hell. God in one made man and dwelt among us and conquered every enemy and had proven that the trinity of Satan was conquered and that the trinity of God was made known. 
because only God alone had power to bring back life again. He was that Emmanuel. God had been manifested in the flesh. Now, in this quote, William Branham confuses three ideas of the Godhead. He confuses the Trinity with oneness, with Arianism. Here, William Branham confuses three different understandings of the Godhead into one mishmashed quote. But, remember in 1961, Trinitarianism is of the devil, I say, thus saith the Lord. The Trinity of God was made known. So he's all over the board. We have one simple doctrine. Now, when we talk to message ministers here, we talk to Jesse Smith as an example. We talked about the Trinity one time. Talked to Jesse and we said, okay, so where is William Branham on the Trinity? What is his view on the Trinity? In the middle there, because we showed him all these quotes. The ones in the middle. The ones where he says the Trinity is not mentioned in the Holy Scripture. The ones where he says it's a man-made scheme uh, of an, an old dirty church rag wrapped around to take the place of the sap line of God's Holy Spirit. That, that, those are the ones you should pay attention to. Don't pay attention to the last one. And don't pay attention to the first ones. Now, I'd, I'll buy into progressive revelation. It, I mean, <clears throat> you have to if you think that, that William Branham taught the Trinity in the first three. And all of a sudden, he, his mind got changed. Oh, no, no, no. That was progressive revelation, Tim. He didn't have the full revelation until he got the seals. Seals took place in 1963. The first... Uh, the Trinity is of the devil, quote, is from 1959. But you would have to buy into progressive revelation if you thought his original teaching of the Trinity was not true, and his later, from 1959 to 1961, teaching of the Trinity was correct. But then what happened in 1965? See, we talk about these, and that's a major, major, major doctrine. That's a big deal to message folks. We, we get comments all the time, you're nothing but a Trinitarian. Well, you're just a Trinitarian. Tell me, do you believe in the Trinity? And it's the, it's the gotcha question. Because if you believe in the Trinity, then you, you, you don't know what you're talking about. We can't believe anything you say because you believe in the Trinity. And in fact, I don't believe in the Trinity. I have a different understanding of the Godhead because of the studies that I've done. Uh, but but it's not important what I believe in terms of the Trinity or, or not. What's important is what William Branham said. And what William Branham said is, I believe in the Trinity, the Trinity, the third person of the Trinity. He's perfect in his threes. He's perfect in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God's in a Trinity. God's power is in a Trinity. I can prove it by the Bible. And then he turns and, oh, no, 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 that's wrong. That's wrong. Progressive revelation. He must have gotten corrected. Trinity, it's not even mentioned in the scripture. No such thing as a, a Trinitarian God. It, it's of the devil. It hatched out of hell. Okay. Trinitarianism is of the devil. I say that, thus saith the Lord. And yet in 1965, he goes back and talks about the Trinity of God, which was made known. So, you know, which doctrine, if you want to talk about the Trinity, which version of the Trinity, Arianism, Oneness, Trinitarianism, Triune Doctrine, which Trinity of William Branham's, which understanding of the Godhead is it that you, that you want to discuss? Because William Branham addresses all four of those. Wow. Okay, what do we conclude in all of this? Let's start first. William Granham, the self-proclaimed prophet of God, taught many things, including the Bible in the Zodiac, the Bible in the Pyramids, and the life of Enoch in such a way that it did not align with the very word of God. Came out, it, it, he got it from something that was not scriptural. It was rejected as a book in terms of being uh, inspired by God. It was rejected because it is untrue and attributed to a patriarch who did not write the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch, an apocryphal book, 
was not written by Enoch, who was translated from the earth around 3,000 years prior to the book ever having been written. The book of Enoch is considered to be a work of fiction and is not accepted as a canonical book of the Bible by any legitimate biblical scholar or body of scholars. Nobody believes the book of Enoch should be a canonical book of the Bible. But we have William Branham quoting the book of Enoch and telling us, based on the book of Enoch, that Enoch built the pyramids and put all of the great prophecies inside of the, uh, the pyramids. Message ministers are so concerned about the information that's been published on the internet, which correctly shows that William Branham is a liar, fraud, and false prophet, that they're willing to double down on really bad research or conduct no research at all on their own just to maintain their congregations. Hey, if that's if you read that stuff and that's how you're led, I I just prefer you get out of my uh, my church. Just don't even bother to come back to my church, according to Barakoff. And and everybody in their message churches, tons of people. Amen, amen, amen. They, they haven't done any research either. So, anyway, <clears throat> listen. <clears throat> I needed to address that real quick. Thanks a lot for the videos that you sent. I really thought that the that we had given enough information about things like uh, the Zodiac, obviously not. Here's another lop of that. Now let's see if we double down again or triple down on, on the bad research. Let's see if Jason Watkins wants to tell us one more time that, the, that he's looking at the third Bible. We just ask you to do the research, folks. We just ask you to look for it for yourself. It's all we've done. We've taken the words of William Branham. We've compared them directly to the Word of God. And we discover that they have nothing to do with the Word of God in instances like this. In fact, we see that the sermons, William Branham's words, talk about the book of Enoch, which is an apocrypha, which is basically, there's a reason that it was not accepted as a canonical book in the Bible. It's untrue. It's basically fiction and attributed to a patriarch in the Bible. Good work, William Branham. Love everybody. God bless you. Hope 2022 is going well for you. We'll be back. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of time between now and the time we get back. Uh, but keep sending the videos. We really love them. We'll talk to you in a little bit, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.